Okay, so uh, what I'd like to do, I, I mentioned this right before I turn the video, I'm going to give you a, a kind of shortcut on how to factor a three-term polynomial. So if you remember, the things that we're looking for here are, well, diamond problems. And we're still going to do exactly the same thing, but there's a way to avoid factoring by grouping. Now, whether that saves you a lot of time or not, I don't think it personally does, but it's just another method that I'm going I'm to give to you just to be thorough here. So I'm going to go very fast with these two problems. Um, try to stick with me. Again, this is not going to influence one way or another the way that you do these problems. If you, if you like the grouping method that I've taught you basically since the first day of class, stick with it. Okay? Uh, if you want something a little different, here's a different way to think about it. So uh, first thing we look at, order, yes. Positivity of the first term, check. Do we have GCF besides one? No and no. You guys follow me? Mm -hmm. Now, no matter what, at this point, you're going to do a diamond method because there are how many terms? Mm -hmm. Three terms. Now, usually, what we use our diamond method for is we set up and do 2x squared and split up a middle term. And then we factor by grouping. This works all the time, but I'm going to give you a, a slight shortcut that just avoids this part. It will allow you to go directly from here to here without having to do this stuff. Now, the reason why I have taught these lessons doing this is because I like you to see the reason. And I'm not going to explain why the other one works, uh, because frankly, we don't have time, and I'm going to give you a good explanation of how this works. You with me? This works every time. Now, there is a shortcut. So if you want to get here without doing this stuff, this is what you can do. So I'll put it, uh, I'll put it right here, actually. Start with the diamond problem. There's no avoiding this uh, using these, these techniques. Find the same two numbers. Can you please tell me how much is your A in this problem? Two. two. If you divide these two numbers by A, what would you say A was? Two. two. And reduce them, keeping them as fractions, reduce them. That would be four over one. That does not reduce. Are you guys with me on, you know where these numbers come from, right? Because we've done a lot of that. You know where this number's coming from? Yeah. What number is that? A. You know how to reduce fractions. Mm -hmm. This will give you your factors. Here's what I want you to see. The denominator is your A. The numerator is this right there. Well, I, I can't say A. It's the coefficient of your X term. This number gives you the way you finish off that binomial. The denominator is your first coefficient. The numerator positive plus 4 is how you can finish it off. Mm -hmm. Some of you have seen that before, I know you mentioned it, but that's another way that you can look at it. So, instead of having to factor by grouping, it's just hard to explain how this works really, really fast, and I don't want to take a lot of time to explain it, but that's another method for you. Did you guys catch that one? If you did, cool. If not, well, don't worry about it. You have a good way to do it. Uh, I'll show you one more. So, just to show you, it's, it's, it's maybe just a little bit quicker. Uh, it just avoids the grouping. Is the grouping fast already? I think so. It's pretty quick, kind of easy, and it makes sense. Uh, so I, I, do, I do do that one. This one, it's still finding the numbers. So for instance here, you'd have to have 16, you'd have to have negative 105, A times C. This in no way shortens this process. You still have to find those. There's no way around that. Does that make sense to you? Still going to do it. So here you go. Oh my gosh, 16, negative 105. Well, I'm going to do it for you. It's negative 5 and 20 but that might take you some time to do that. Now, after this, you have the choice. You can do the 15x squared minus 5x plus 20x minus 7. I'm sorry, 21. Uh, my bad. <laughs> it was off by a little bit. It didn't look right. Uh, 21. That adds, and you know what? I, I, this is a perfect example of why you should do what I say to do. Before you go any further, you're supposed to check your work, aren't you? Just to make sure that that adds to that number. And I didn't do that and multiplies that number, and now it does. Now we continue by grouping if you want to. Here's a 5x, here's 3x minus 1. Here's a plus 7, here's 3x minus 1. So clearly, we can factor that as 3x minus 1 and 5x plus 7. Now, 
If I start from the diamond again, I get 16, I get negative 105. You still have to find these numbers. Only if you don't want to do the grouping, which to me, that didn't take that long, really, to me. Did that take a long time to you? Okay, so, but if you want the other way, you, you, for, at this point, I don't care. The way math teachers work, we kind of show you a way that makes sense and prove everything about it, and then we give you shortcuts. It's not the other way around, because if we give you shortcuts first, you wouldn't learn the other way, would you? That's why we teach you the other way first. So, uh, what's our A in this problem? 15. You may not forget to simplify that. If you do, your problem's, problem's kind of messed up because you still have a GCF in there, okay? So you do have to simplify. So, say what? Three, three, seven. And this gives you? Three, one, eight, one third. 3x minus 1. So that would give you the 3 on the x. That gives you a minus 1. This gives you a 5x. That gives you a plus 7. And it's the same factorization. You can verify that all you want. Show of hands, feel okay with, with those ones. Do you have to do this way? No. Can you do that way still? Yeah, sure. Do you have to do that way? I don't care. Uh, either way you want to go. Did I answer your question? Okay, now, I'm going to erase all that. Here's a shortcut for you if you like the shortcut. Uh, what I do want to focus on today is how we go about factoring binomials. You see, we've done a lot of things so far. We've learned all about how to factor GCF, and that's the very first thing that we do, right? We factor GCF. In fact, we do, uh, actually, before that even, what do we do with all polynomials all the time? Mm -hmm. First. Yeah. Before GCF. Order. Make sure they're in order. We always make sure they're in order. So we do order. We look to see if the first term is... Then we start looking for... Okay, and we factor GCF all the time. After we've done those three things, then we start counting the number of terms. Everyone should know this. How many, what do you do if you have four terms? What method? Grouping. Very good. In fact, this kind of relies on that, right? For grouping. Four terms is grouping. Three terms is... So that you can do a grouping. Remember, there was a shortcut available to us. Now there's two shortcuts available to us. We haven't talked about what to do after you factor the GCF and you have not four terms, not three terms, but two terms. So we're going to talk about two terms today. That's what binomial means. By two nomial, kind of this idea of name or term. So binomial, two terms. Here's what I want to show you. I'm going to lead you through not an actual proof, but kind of how we rationalize this formula I'm about to give you. So here's an example. Let's say I gave you something very simple. I gave you x squared minus 9. And I said, I want you to factor that. And we go through the whole process. Stick with me. I'm going to, go, I'm going to do it quick because I've said this at least 100 times. Uh, first thing we check for is order. Is it in order? Second thing, is the first term positive? Third thing, do we have a GCF besides 1? How many terms do we have? Two. Will grouping work? No. Will dino problem work? No. What are we using? Well, we're going to make a diamond problem work. We're going to make it work. Uh, we will not do this often, okay? There's, we're going to do this like two, maybe three times until you get the hang that uh, there's a formula involved with this and it works every time, okay? But I'm going I'm to I'm going to kind of prove it to you through examples. So here we go. If we had a diamond problem, check it out. If we had a diamond problem, the A would be 1, and the C would be negative 9. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. The B, is there an X mm -hmm. besides X squared? Is there an X in the middle? Mm -hmm. Then your B would be 0. So our A would be 1, our B would be 0, and our C would be, uh, well, negative 9. So A times C would give you negative 9. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Now, can you give me two numbers that add to 0 and multiply to negative 9? 3 and negative 9. 3 and negative 3. Can you verify the 3 and the negative 3? They have to be different signs, don't they? They have to be the same number because if you add two numbers with different signs, that will give you 0. It's the only way that can happen. So it can't be 9 and 1. It have to be negative 3 and it have to be 3. Uh, oh, yeah, we just talked about it. Will the shortcut work in this example? So this would factor as shortcut will work because our a is 1, x minus 3, and x plus 3. Show of hands if that one made sense to you. Can you verify it? Can you check your work? Yeah, yeah, if you look at that, it says x squared plus 3x 
minus 3. Hey, what's plus 3x minus 3x? Zero. That's why I don't have a term. And then minus 9 at the very end. What, these, what this uh, style of binomial is called is a difference of squares. I'm going to talk about that for just a little bit. Check it out. Do you know what a difference is in math? It's a subtraction. Do you see the subtraction? Yeah. That's a difference. Do you see the squares I'm talking about? Yeah. What, I, what I mean by square, why it's important to be a, a square number. Let's say this wasn't 9. Let's say this was uh, 15. And I ask you the question, give me two numbers that add to 0 and multiply to negative 15. Can you do it? No. No, not without some decimals, huh? Actually, not without square roots. Uh, but no, we can't do it because we have three and five. But that doesn't. There's no way that that adds up to zero. Does that make sense to you? Okay. What about uh, what if I put 18 there? Would it work? No. What if I put uh, 16 there? Would it work? Yes. yes. Oh, there's a diff that, That's a that's a style of number. It's called a perfect square. square. That's where we're getting the, the difference of squares from. That's squared. And a number here has to be squared in order for this pattern to work, in order for this diamond problem to work. Let's try one more, okay? So this was what I give you. Nine, nine looks nine. like. Negative nine, negative three, three, two, okay. <laughs> Let's see if you were paying attention. Uh, I have y squared, I have a minus here, and I want to make it fit that pattern. Would uh, 30 be a good number? 30. Yeah. Can you multiply something by itself and get 30? No. no, I'm not talking about 15 and 15, because 15 okay. times 15 is 225, okay? I'm not asking you to divide the number by 2. That's not what we're doing. 9 divided by 2 is 3? No. No, that's not what we're doing here. Um, how about 49? Is 49 a good number? Yes. Okay, we're going through it real fast again. Uh, everybody, what is your A here? One. Is 1. Very good. What is your B? Zero. There is no middle Y term. What is your C? Therefore, a times c is negative 49. <coughs> hey, can you think of two numbers which add to 0 and multiply to negative 49? It's got to be the same number because it's a perfect square. It has to be that. Will the shortcut work, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. We get y, not x, y minus 7 and y plus 7. Quick head nod if you're okay with that so far. Are you starting to see the, all the factor stuff? It, you, I could have taught this to you in four different ways. I could have taught you there's a method for doing uh, simple, like three-term polynomials, and there's a method for having the A up there, and there's a method now for different school. Well, they're all based on this kind of the same idea. Now, we take those ideas, this idea of factor in a trinomial, where it has, well, a number up front, or we have this no middle term, we're still doing the same thing, only we have these shortcuts built in that we, we make things a little easier and a little easier. We have certain patterns that we follow. And that takes this idea of factoring and it kind of breaks into three different sections. That's why we have three different sections in this textbook as far as what we're doing here. Um, so, I'm going to talk about one more, and then I'll have you do a couple on your own after I give you the idea of how you can always factor different squares. The last one I want to give you is this one. Okay, tell me something. Uh, everybody, what is your A, please? One. What is your B? Yeah. What is your C? Yeah. Therefore, A times C gives you 25. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Please pay attention to this example, even if you think, man, this is really easy. We've been doing this for a week. I know. I know we have. But there's lots to this. So pay attention to this example. Um, give me two numbers that add to zero that also multiply to 25. Negative 5 and 5. Negative 5 and 5. Okay, very good. So you're telling me right now that negative 5 and 5 multiplies to positive 25. Oh, dang. There's no solution. Why? Because it's positive 25. Because, well, okay, I know it's positive 25. Why is it true? So if I'm going to get a, if I'm going to get a, remember doing this? Man, when I first introduced this, I gave you the hints, right? I said, if that number's positive, you have to have the same signs. Agreed? You have to. So it's either positive fives or it's negative fives. Mm -hmm. If they're both positive fives, that's not right. Mm -hmm. If they're both negative fives, that's not right. Mm -hmm. Since those are the only two options we have, there's no way to do this. Remember I told you how some things are not factorable? Mm -hmm. Please listen right now. This is one of them. If you have two terms with a plus between them, and there's, 
by the time we got here, you would have done the GCF, right? Wouldn't you have? You do order, first term positive, GCF, then you count the terms. If you get all that far and you have two terms with a plus between them and one's a square, you can't touch it. Do, 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 do. Can't touch this. I didn't bring my hammer pants, but. Anyway. This is one of those things that does not factor. You can't do anything with it. Show fans if you understand that concept. This is why what we're talking about right now. called a difference, meaning two terms, difference, two terms separated by a minus sign, not a plus sign, a minus sign. Difference of squares. The two number, the two terms have to be in some way or shape or form a square. Like x squared is a square. That's a square. And 9 is a square, and 49 is a square, and 25 is a square. They're all squares, but there has to be a minus between them. If that's the case, we can always factor it like this. There, there's a definite pattern to it. You can do a diamond problem every single time. It's going to take a lot of time. Okay, I'm trying to save you time here. So what I've tried to do is explain to you why this works via a diamond problem, why this does not work by the diamond problem. And now I'm going to give you a formula. If, to make your lives easier, this is not something different. It's the same thing. If you ever have a difference of squares, ever have a difference of squares, I'm going to show you something right now. That all, both, both of these, not all three, both of these fit this pattern. Do you see that it fits this pattern? Here's x squared, here's a, it's just saying, hey, you have something squared. That's something squared. Now, can you write 9 as something squared? Sure. Instead of having 9, what could I do? This is this pattern. That's what that is. What this is, what the difference of square says, if there's a difference, not a plus, but a difference, a subtraction, and the first term is something squared, or you can write it that way, and the second term is something squared, or you can write it that way, then this always factors as a minus b, a plus b. In other words, the quantity being squared the quantity being squared with different signs between them. Do you guys see that fits this pattern? Look at this. Here's x, oh, x and x. Here's 3, oh, 3 and 3. Here's, can you write 49 as something squared, please? Something squared. This fits that pattern. Here instead of a squared, we have y squared. Here instead of b squared, we have 7 squared. Put your a's first. Put your B's second. Put your Y's first. Put your 7's second. Have different signs between them. It's from the diamond problem. It's from exactly that. It's not magic. Okay? None of this stuff is magic. Uh, but because this happens every single time this way with different squares, we have a formula for it. And that formula makes it just easier, quicker. Show of hands if I've explained why this is the way it is well enough for you. Okay, shall we try some? Mm -hmm. We're going to gradually start building up uh, to make them harder and harder. But for right now, I'm going to give you like three or four to do on your own just to make sure that you guys truly do understand this. Now, if you want to, if you're still not convinced that this always works for this, you can do a couple diamond problems if you want to, but eventually I don't want you to have to do that because this is going to be so much quicker for you. Okay? So here's what I want you, want you to do. Verify that they are difference of squares. If they are, factor them. If they're not, don't factor them. You need to be good at that, recognizing when you can use something. So here you go. Please, 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 please do not just jump into these because we're in this section, okay? I still want you thinking about all this following. I want you to think, are they in order? I want you to think, is the first term positive? 
I want you to think, is there a GCF? And so many students struggle with the GCF on, the, on this section. I guarantee that some of you are going to do this if you're really not focusing. Factor the GCF. Okay, if there is one. Now, there's not in any of these, but you have to check it because it's going to save your lives, all right? After that, then count terms. Then count terms. If it's four terms, grouping. Three terms, diamond, so that you can do grouping. If it's two terms, check for a difference of squares first. That's what I want. I wrote them exactly where they're supposed to be written. Okay. Just checking. All right. Okay, let's look at the first one, x squared minus 16. It's in order. The first term's positive. There's no GCF besides one, and there are two terms. First thing we do to check for two terms, does it fit one of the things I'm talking about today? Namely, at this point, is it a difference of squares? Is it a difference? Yes. Come on, I need more than that. Is it a difference? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's got a minus sign. Is the first term something squared? Yes. No. Is the second term something squared? Yes. No. What? Four. So you could write that as x squared minus 4 squared. Agree? Yes. If you can do that, then it's a difference of 2 squares. And we can factor it very quickly. Again, this is a shortcut. Could you do the diamond problem here? Yeah. B is 0, C is negative 16. Hey, the only two numbers are negative 4 and 4. Okay, so the shortcut. That's where this 4 is coming from. So we have x minus 4, x plus 4. By the formula, that's the way we do it. By a diamond problem, you'd have to show the diamond. Either way is fine. I just want you to get comfortable with seeing this and doing that. It's going to happen so often, oh my gosh, we're doing this all the time. You go x squared minus 6, 8, x minus 4, x plus 4. It's going to happen, honestly, that fast once you get the hang of this. You guys okay with it so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good. Could you check your work? Yes. Yeah, you should be doing that. Okay, uh, next one, y squared plus 64, true or false? That's a difference of squares. False. false. Will it work if I do y minus 8, y plus 8? No. no. So don't kid yourself and think these always factor. This is absolutely not true. What fails here? Positive Plus. Yeah. There's no way to multiply something times itself and get both 0 for a b and a positive number. You can't do it. Uh, next question I have for you uh, on this. Does it matter the order in which you do this? Is x plus 4 times x minus 4 the same thing as what this is? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't care what order you have that. And the formula says minus first, but it doesn't matter. As long as you have different signs is the idea here. The different signs, excuse me, stems from the fact we did over here. To get a 0, you have to have the same number with different signs. That's what it's from. Okay, next one. Uh, can we factor that? Yes. Why? What's it called? People on the right-hand side, I'm not getting much from you today. What's that called? This type of a two-term polynomial. What is it? Difference. Good. Difference of squares. We need to know those names because it tells you when you can do it. There's a difference. That's squared. What is this as a number squared? Six. Six squared. So this is z squared minus six squared. And if that's the case, that's definitely a difference of two squares. So we can say, okay, well, all I know is that I keep my z, I keep my 6, I write two factors because we're factoring here, we're always creating parentheses. Uh, we know this from a diamond problem, right? This should not be a big surprise to us. Uh, we're going to get these two factors because this is a diamond problem that's kind of had its leg cut off or something, I don't know. It doesn't have that middle term. Uh, it's just a 0 for the b. So it's still a diamond problem, we just have a shortcut for it now. And we're just going to make sure that we have the same z's and the same 6's with different signs between them. We can double check it by FOIL. That's the idea. Next one, y minus 100. True or false, that's a difference of squares. False. Wait a minute, that's a square. But it will not y <laughs> Don't fall into the pattern that every time you see two terms, you factor it. That would be a bad idea, okay? This is what I'm trying to get at right now. I know that this, for some of you, can be pretty easy. You go, I've done this before. You might have done it before. Or, well, I, just, I know the pattern. I wanted to show you where it comes from first that this is just a shortcut, all right? It's not a formula that comes from nowhere, it's not magic, it's just a shortcut. And the reason why we have shortcuts is because they work every single time. And this is great, you can prove, you can prove it through FOIL right now. A squared, middle terms are the same sign, or sorry, same uh, terms with different sign, they're gone, and then minus B squared, you can, you can prove it. Uh, but it stems from the diamond problem. Also, 
I want to make sure that when you get pluses, you're not immediately factoring those things. When you get something that's not squared, you're not immediately factoring those things. Really be conscious of what your problem is. You guys with me? Let's step it up just a little bit. So, if I gave you something like that on a test, could you do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or basically any x squared minus 1, minus 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, 199, all the squares. That's it. There's only basically 15 numbers through 225 that you can even factor. They're just the perfect squares. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So be careful with the numbers, which is fine. Now, what happens when we have an A that's not 1? I'm going to do this diamond problem one more time just to verify that you can do it. But after that, we're going to stick just with this formula, just with our pattern. So let's check these things. Uh, is it in order? Yes. Yeah, that's great. All right. Uh, now, is there a, a GCF? No. Should we should we check it still with two terms? Yeah. yeah. Always check for GCF. Always every single time. So if there's nothing that goes into both of them, you're good to go. Um, how many terms are there? Two. Two terms, and there's no GCF. Is it a difference? Yeah. It, are there two squares? Mm -hmm. You could do this with a diamond problem, but it's going to involve a lot of work. I'll show you one time that you can. After that, we're not going to do it anymore. So here's a diamond problem for you for the for the last time for a while, all right? Uh, what's your B, please? Zero. Zero. What's your A, ladies and gentlemen? Four. Okay, so the, I'm sorry, just the A. Four. What's your C? So negative 36, you know what? These are all pretty easy because we have zero and negative 36. It has to be the same number to give us that. What's the, what's the number? Negative Sure, so if you were to do this, you could do the shortcut way I showed you in the beginning class. You could write out your grouping. I'm going to do the grouping this time. 4y squared minus 6y uh, plus 6y minus 9. So there's, I know that there's no y, but you have to introduce one for the middle term. So you'd have minus 6y plus 6y. So we factor out 2y. We get, uh, what is that, 2y minus Three, we factor out the three and we get two y minus three. Hey, is it going to work? Yeah. Two y minus three and two y plus three. I know I'm going fast, but we've done this so many times. I'm going to assume that you're pretty good at factoring by grouping at this point. Let's check it out. Uh, do you all know where the zero came from? Yeah. There's no middle term. Do you know where the negative thirty-six came from? That's our a times our c. Now, if we're going to separate this by negative 6 and 6, that's, that's our y term, middle term. If we factor it, we get negative, I'm uh, sorry, 2y minus 3 and 2y plus 3. Could you check your work by distribution? Mm -hmm. Here's what I want to know. Did you guys see the similarity in the answer between this one and this one? See how we have the same first terms, 2y and 2y? Here we have z and z. We have the same last terms, 3 and 3. 6 and 6, only the signs are different between them. That idea signifies that we have this difference of squares. Now, can we get this answer without doing all this work? Oh yeah, that's what that's for. This says that any time you've got a difference of two squares, or you can write it like that, that we can do this pattern, that we can do this formula. Just be careful about something. When you're finding the difference of two squares, you have to at least think of them as squares, or better yet, write them as squares. Here's what I mean. In order to do this with that formula, what's got to happen is we have to have some quantity being squared minus some quantity being squared. That's got to take place. So we can't really think of this as 4y times 4 That doesn't work. We've got to think, well, what is 4y squared? Notice that the square here is only on the y. I want to make it go to the number and the y. So I'm going to have to think of what's the square root of 4, or what number can we square that gives us 4? What is that? Two. So here, instead of 4y squared, I'm going to think about this as 2y squared. Here, the, the cadence in my voice shifts a little bit. Instead of 4y squared, it's 2y quantity squared. Is this the same as that to you? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. Now, can I write 9 as something squared? Mm -hmm. Is this the same as that? Sure, if I square 2y, I get 4y squared. If I square 3, I get 9. However, now does this fit this concept? You still with me, guys? Yeah. Is it a difference? Yeah. Something being squared? Something being squared? Yeah. 
here's how to deal with that. If we have something, some quantity being squared minus another quantity being squared, we can still use this. Put your first term in the first places, put your last term in the last places, make sure your signs are different. So first term in the first places, last term in the last places, make sure your signs are different and we get exactly the same thing back again. Only this, when you get the hang of it, is a lot, a lot quicker. You guys get the, the picture here? Mm -hmm. So do we need to do diagonal problem every time we see one? No. no, but what you do need to do is by that that's something being squared. That's something being squared, and there's a minus between them. Tell you what, we'll do uh, about three more. I'm going to give you when you can use this stuff, and I'll give you a couple to do on your own. First thing, 25x squared minus 1. I, I'm not going to do the diamond problem every time. In fact, that was the last time I'm going to do it for these guys. What I'm going to focus on more is your ability to understand that this is this form, this difference of square. So the first thing we check for, is there a difference? Because we know if there's not a difference, we can't do it. Is it a difference? Yes. Uh, do we have a square for the first term? Yeah. Yes. Then you better write it as such. Uh, what's the first term as something squared? 5x. 5x. OK, I like the 5x. There's a minus, we'll write a minus. Now wait a minute, one. Can you write one as something squared? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the most trivial perfect square. What that means is that, shoot, is it true that one squared is the same as one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in fact, it's a perfect square, it's just a really, really simple one. So there's like, there's four, there's nine, but one squared is one, therefore one is inherently a perfect square. Does this fit this pattern? What I want you to do right now, go ahead and just finish that off, okay? I want you to factor it. No diamond problem. Just take this and put it in that pattern. I want to see that you can at least do that step for me, okay? Factoring binomials will still give you, with different squares, will still give you two parentheses. You just got to put the first, the first term in your first places, your last term in your last places. What goes, what goes here? Five X. And then what? Minus one. And then? Five X. Plus one. Plus one. Does it matter if you have the plus here and the minus there? No. As long as you don't have the same signs, that's what we're looking at. You know what? If you get that one right away, first day in class, you might be a little intimidated. Oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do with that? Well, let's think through the whole process here. Number one thing, we usually check for order. In this case, we have a y squared and we have an x squared. So the order, it doesn't matter. Uh, what we do want is the first term positive. Do we have the first term positive? Yes. So you wouldn't really want to switch this around because then you'd lose the fact that your first term would be positive. Does that make sense to you? Next thing we check for, do never ever neglect this. Always check for your GCF. Does it have a GCF? No. Something that goes into both those terms. Mm -hmm. But ladies and gentlemen, you've got to check for it, okay? That's going to really save you some headaches later. Nextly, we count the number of terms. How many terms have we got? Two. For four terms, we use? Perfect. For three terms, we use? Diamond. To make it grouping. For two terms, we could use a diamond method. We're not going to, though. We're going to check to see, to see if it's a difference of squares first. Is it a difference? Yeah. Yeah. Can you write those terms as something squared? Yeah. Let's do it. How about the first one? What is it? Four Four y. Y. Good. I like it. Perfect. And then the minus and then? Seven, seven x squared. And so, so the 4y quantity squared, the 7x mm -hmm. quantity squared. Make sure you're right. Uh, when we square that, do we get 16y squared? Mm -hmm. When we square that, do we get 49x squared? We've got to make sure there's a minus between them. If this was a plus, could I do the problem? Mm -hmm. I won't even try. Who cares? You can't even do anything with it. So let's continue. I want you to go ahead and write the... Uh, the factorization of their formula, please. Remember that when we do this, we'll get our two parentheses. Okay, so we know our pattern. We know our, our formula for different squares says put the first term first. Put the second term second, 
make sure your signs are different, and that automatically factors the different squares really, really quick. Show of hands if you're feeling okay about this, this process. Okay, last one I want to talk to you before I give you some of your own. Um, real quick, can you verify that's a difference of squares? Yeah. It looks a little weird because it's a fraction, but if you think about this x squared minus something squared, what's the square root of 16? Four. So this would be 4 over. Four. If you can do that with a fraction, then you can still factor it as a difference of squares. Here's something squared minus something squared. So if we factor it, don't let the fractions intimidate you, ladies and gentlemen. You put the first thing first, you put the last thing last, and it's factored. Tell you what, I want you to try three of these things on your own here. just a little bit. Did you check your work? Mm -hmm. Distribute them and all that? You should. Okay, so first one. Is there a difference of squares? Yeah. Yes. As long as you can write it as something being squared minus something being squared, then of course. We know that's 4y quantity squared minus. One's the trivial one. If you have one, that always counts as something being squared. It also counts as something being cubed or something to the fourth power, fifth power, and we'll talk about that in a little while. So if we have a difference of two quantities being squared, we can always factor that by a difference of squares. We have the same first term twice, the same second term twice, different signs between them, and we know that we're right. You should double check it just to make sure you can distribute it, uh, make sure that you're right. But did you get that first one? Mm -hmm. Okay, second one. Should I do anything with that problem? No. Why? It's We're smart enough to know that that's a that really is kind of a diamond problem. It really is. And there's no way that we're going to multiply the same two numbers and get a positive 49 and also get 0 for a B. That's not going to happen. So if you did anything with this, shame on you. Wow, shame on you. Why? Because there's a plus there. It's not a difference of squares. We already talked about that. It's not a difference. You can't factor it if you're talking about squares. Did you leave that one alone? So we can't factor that one. Uh, is this different? 
Yes. They give you the same thing to show you the difference. One of them you can factor, one of them you can't factor. If you ever factor that and get the same thing as this one, that's, that's a problem, right? Because these are definitely different uh, expressions. So here, as long as we have a difference of two quantities being squared, we'll be able to use that difference of squares. Here, give me that one. What is it? Six. Six. Let's double check. Six x squared. Yeah. Seven y squared. Yeah. There's a difference. Hey, it's a difference of squares. Create your two sets of parentheses since we're factoring. We're, the reason why we have those two sets, by the way, is we're, we're shortcutting, right? It's really a diamond problem. It's really just a, a three-term polynomial where the middle term is zero. That's the idea. So that's why we still get those two factors. And it's just we shortcut this thing so we don't have to show that. Make sure our signs are different between them, but we have the same term twice. Last one, did you guys uh, do the fraction? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. This one's pretty straightforward. There's no number out front, so we just have that y squared. Here, as long as these are both perfect squares, any fraction is not a problem. As soon as you have one that's not a perfect square, you can't do it. So if that was like a 24, you go, ah, no go. But this being 5 ninths squared makes it pretty easy for us. We can do y minus 5 ninths and y plus 5 ninths. Is this uh, sensible for you guys? Mm -hmm. Let's feel okay. All right, let's continue then. There are some applications to this that are really, really convenient, but can look really confusing if you don't know what to do with them. You ready? First thing we would normally look for is order, but I want you to notice something. When we have different variables, that order idea kind of kind of falls away. Are you with me on that one? We'd like to have our x's in order and our y's in order, but we have both of them. There's really not a great order that we can have. What we care more about is is the first term positive. Is it? Mm -hmm. That's what we want to know. Okay. Secondly, is there a GCF besides one? So there's not much else we can do with this. How many terms are there? Two. It's not grouping. No. It's not a diamond problem. So this is a little weird. Oh my gosh, how in the world are we going to do that? <laughs> You're going to force this thing to be a difference of squares. I'm going to show you, show you this idea. It's kind of a cool idea. The idea is, well, tell you what. A difference of squares does this. It has a, first, is it a difference? Yes. Oh, well, that's great. At least we have that. It has something being squared. And something being I want you to look at this for a second, okay? Uh, would you agree that if I can put something in here and something in here, that it's going to fit this paradigm? That I can, that I can factor by difference of squares. Do you get that? That's what we've done every time. It's something squared minus something squared. Uh, something squared minus something squared. Something squared minus something squared. Here, if I can write this as something squared minus something squared, I can still do it. So the idea is change this expression so that this is a quantity being squared. How can I get x to the fourth by putting it as something squared? What has to go here? X squared. X squared. Good, because we know an exponent raised to an exponent, we have to not add. We have to multiply. We're going to multiply. These get multiplied. You need to know that about your exponents. Those get multiplied. Well, if that's the case, if that's y to the 14th, what needs to go there? Y to the 7th. That's right, y to the 7th. They get multiplied, not added. Okay, if you're if you're confused on that, refresh your memory on some uh, expert rules. Go back home and you really look at that, because if you're going to do this to me, like this, and give me y to the twelfth, absolutely correct. If you're going to do this to me, and give me y to the twelfth, we're going to have a really big freaking problem. Okay? <laughs> Are those the same? Mm -hmm. Then don't make that mistake. Uh, these get added because you have y, 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 y. Five y's times another y, 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 y. Seven y's, that's 12 y's. This says you have y to the fifth times 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 y to the fifth. That's 35 y's that you have right there. Okay, that's a lot more y's. 
So when you have exponents raised to exponents, you multiply it. When you have exponents times, ex well, common bases being multiplied, you add those exponents. So this gets multiplied, this gets multiplied. Are we set straight on that so far? Can you verify that's x to the fourth and y to the 14th? Yeah. Is it a difference of squares? Yeah. Yes. Even though it looks a little weird, yeah, it is. There's a difference. This is being squared, that's being squared. Now let's see if you can put all this together. Left-hand side people, you guys, what goes here? Good, it's perfect. What goes here? This. The same thing. The first thing goes first. What goes here? And what goes here? The second thing goes second. First thing first, last thing last. Uh, what goes here? Which one? Whichever one. I like the minus first, but that's just me. As long as they're different. Could you still verify your work? Yes. As long as you know that when you multiply common bases you add, then yes, you could. Because here would be x squared times x squared, that's x to the fourth. y to the seventh times y to the seventh, that's y to the fourteenth, not forty-nine. That's the idea. Tell you what, while it's real fresh in your head, I want you to do one real quick. So I don't want to leave you hanging. Is it a difference of squares? Yes. Not yet, but can you write it as a difference of squares is what I want to know. Yeah. The difference is there. If that was a plus, would I even bother? No. 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 There's no GCF. They're in order. Kind of doesn't really matter if they're in order or not when there's two variables. There's a difference. There's two terms. Two terms. Not diamond problem. Got to try difference of squares. If we can write them as something squared minus something squared, we're good to go. That's x to the third or fourth? Third because we multiply. This is y to the because we multiply. Hey, squared minus squared. That's what we want. Difference of squares. First terms go first. Last terms go last. That's our pattern. Remember, this is a shortcut. Okay, it's a shortcut. It stems from something. It stems from that difference of squares idea that we do every time. It's proven, uh, but I want you to know that it's just a shortcut. That's the idea. Show fans feel okay with. That's great. Any questions or comments at all? We'll continue this next time. All right, moving right along. So we're going to uh, do a couple problems together on just some factoring, see if we can factor completely. I'll give you some to do on your own. And like I said before, we're going to some different concepts uh, very shortly on how to factor some, some unique types of expressions. So um, I'm not going to say this all the time today, but I, I want to just reiterate it one more time. What's the first thing we check for when factoring? Order. Good. Are these both in order? Yes. yes. We like that. What's the next thing we check for in factoring? Good. And that includes checking to make sure the first term is positive. So do we have a GCF here? No. Do we have a GCF here? Besides yes. What is it? Why? If we forget to factor that Y, we run into some pretty serious problems because we only have two terms. With two terms, can we factor by grouping? No. 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 Can we do a diamond problem? Yes. Yeah. Should we do a diamond problem? No. 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 We should look for difference of squares is what we look for. And if you don't factor the GCF, it's really hard to find. So let's look at the first one. Do we have a difference of squares with x to the fourth minus 16? Well, you kind of have to think about it and make it a difference of squares. So if we have x to the fourth minus 16, that's all well and good. I know that I know that that's a square. How else could I write the 16? Four squared. So that fits. But remember what we did when we had stuff like, uh, I think I gave you this one, x to the 6th minus x to the 14th. Remember doing that one? Mm -hmm. Or so it was similar. And we factored this and said, you know what we want to do? We wrote it different. We want to write these as squares. Use the same idea. This was from last time. Use the same idea with this. So we want to try to write this as something squared minus something squared. What has to go there to make it equal to this but look different? X squared. Good. 
And at this point, as soon as we do that, as soon as we have two squares with a difference between them, we have this difference of squares idea and we can factor it with that pattern. Remember something though, uh, this is just a shortcut. So this is a shortcut from a diamond problem. We talked a lot about that uh, yesterday. Do you remember talking about that yesterday? Mm -hmm. When we could do it with the diamond problem, but this, uh, this is so nice, so fast, that we usually don't. So in our case, uh, what's the first thing, by the way, the diamond problem, the reason why we have these two factors is from that idea. Uh, what's the first thing that I put in each of these factors? Good, yeah. First thing goes first. Last thing goes last. Recall that when we're doing different squares, it's really common for like rookie mathematicians to put a 16 here and here because they go, oh yeah, I just put that there, both spots. Uh, remember that we need to write it as something squared in order to do that, in order for it to really fit the pattern. So not 16 here and here, but simply four. There and there. And then what tell me something about the signs. They're different. It okay, it doesn't matter what order they're in, but it does matter that they're different. So whether the first one's minus, second one's plus, or vice versa, that doesn't matter. Uh, but it is important that you have both of them. Quick show of hands if you're okay with that so far. So far, all right. So you're good on writing this as a difference of squares. And we're good on knowing the pattern of difference of squares. If we have two squares with a minus between them, first thing goes first, last thing goes last, different signs. You okay so far? Mm -hmm. Now, on a test, do you have the problem right? Oh, you should double check it, shouldn't you? Mm -hmm. So x to the fourth, okay, that's gone, minus 16, I know that that's right. My question is, let, let's check this out. Let's pretend that I gave you just this problem and just this problem. Okay, you, you, you gotta know this. You gotta, at this point, you gotta know this. Can you factor that? No. no. Why? Well, wait, that's a square. Remember talking about diamond problem. You can't do that. You can't add to zero and multiply to a positive. It doesn't make sense. Can you factor this one? Yes. Yeah. Then you better not freaking stop right there because if you stop right there, you have the problem wrong. Do you see the difference? So if you can factor any piece of this, you need to continue. So factorization is not a one and done type of idea. You nailed it as far as factoring the difference of squares, but there's another difference of squares in there. So don't stop if you can continue factoring at all. Is that, that clear for you? And, some, and it's really common for students to do that. You go, oh yeah, hey, I got it right, nailed it. Yeah, you get the big picture, but remember, uh, you're missing the forest for the trees here. You gotta, you gotta really focus on everything needs to be factored. So, when you get down to this far, you go, well, can I factor this? No. No. And ask yourself that question. If I gave you this problem all by itself, could you factor it? If the answer is no, then you're done with that. If you take this off, if I gave you this problem by itself, could you factor it? Yes. Yeah, and if the answer is yeah, then you, oh yeah, you know what? Here's x squared minus 2 squared. That's a difference of squares, I know x minus 2, x plus 2. It's a difference of squares, first thing first, second thing second, and now we have that factor. You guys okay with that one? So, so we have one more step. We go, okay, well, this piece I couldn't factor because it's a sum of squares. Those you can't factor. There's no such thing as that as far as factorization. This was a difference of squares. We've seen it lots. I know it's x minus 2 x plus 2. So this piece became these two factors. This piece I couldn't factor. This right here is your final factorization. And if you look at it, if I gave you just this, could you factor it? No. It's not even squared. If I gave you just this, could you factor it? No. no. This one? No. Mm -hmm. Now it's completely factored. So fans be okay with that idea. All right, very good. <clears throat> Tell you what, let's continue. Let's do this next one. We already briefly talked about it. I'll leave that for a second. Uh, order, yeah. First term positive, sure. GCF, is there a GCF? Yes. So before we do anything like this, you've got to factor the GCF. Otherwise, this doesn't even fit the difference of squares idea. It's not even a square. So we, we'd get stuck on that. If we factor out our GCF, which is y, we get 9y squared minus 25 because we, we divided away 1y from each term. Now, are we done? No. no, no, no. It's for the same reason we weren't done here. You can still factor this piece. So when we do that, okay, well, you know what? I like taking it off to the side. I like taking this problem and saying, if I gave you just this problem, could you factor it? Yes. Yeah, sure. It's how many terms? Two. Two. You don't have to check for GCF. You just did it. So if you've got the right GCF, don't worry about it. Uh, two terms, not grouping. You could do a diamond problem, but if it's a difference and those are squares, we use a difference of squares. 
So we'd write this as something squared minus something squared. And as soon as we do that, here's our 9y squared minus 5 squared. It's the same thing. Only now we look at it as a difference of two squares. And this now fits our pattern. We create our two factors. We put our first thing first, our last thing last. Our signs have to be different, and we don't forget about that y. So because of this, we took it off to the side. We saw a difference of squares. We can factor it. Here's our two factors. We bring down our y. It's just multiplied right in front of it, and that's the correct factorization. I want to know if that made sense to you. Show of hands if you did. Feel okay with it. Are you ready to try a few of them on your own? Mm -hmm. Okay. What I'm going to ask you for, I'm going to ask you to factor these things completely. What that means, I don't want you to stop until you, you absolutely cannot factor anymore. Are we all, we all clear on that one? Okay, so let's do this. So I want these factored completely. Go for it. Try this. So same rules apply. We're always checking to make sure that we're in order. If we have one variable, especially that we're in order, uh, specifically that our first term is positive, check for a GCF. If you have a GCF besides one, you have to factor that out first. Otherwise, the problem comes really hard. Doable sometimes, but a lot harder. Factor the GCF out first, and then count the number of terms. Again, four terms grouping. Three terms, diamond problem, so that you can use grouping. Two terms, really, for right now, if we have squares, Man, we're really just looking at a difference of squares. That's kind of the only thing that we can do after you take care of the GCF. So I'm going to start on the first one here. Um, hmm. Order, check. First term positive, we got it. Do we have a GCF up there besides one? What is it? So when we factor out the x, which is, of course, the first step, we get 36x squared minus 25. Did you make it that far? Yes. Great, you got your GCF. Do we stop there? No, no don't do that. Why not? We have a difference of squares, that's right. There's two terms. We don't count that as a term, that's a factor. So in here we have two terms. Uh, we see the difference, and right there when you see that difference and you see a square in your head with two terms, you should go ding, 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 check difference of squares, because it's the only thing that works. So with a square and a minus, you're checking difference of squares. If it's a cube, We'll talk about that in a little bit. A cube and a plus actually might work. Okay, we'll check that out. But if you have a square, that's got to be a minus, otherwise you're done. All right, so it's pretty quick to check. Now, after this, you go, all right, yeah, difference of squares. This is uh, maybe off to the side. You can do it anywhere you want, really. So here we have 6x squared minus 5 squared. There's a difference. That's 36x squared. That's 25. It's a difference of two squares. So I know I'm going to put my first term first, last term last, and my signs will be different. So we can just put that right here. 
6x minus 5. I know there's another factor of 6x plus 5. And I'm done, right? No, I forgot the x. Ah, forgot the x. Don't forget the x. So I know it's common for us to get wrapped up in what we're doing, but don't forget that any piece you factor out, it's still going to be there. Factorization is basically just breaking up a polynomial into its component factors and multiplying them together. So all those little factors that you have, they still have to be there. They're just little multiplication pieces. Does that make sense to you? Now, next one. Y to the fourth minus 81, can we factor it? Yes. There's no GCF besides one. It's in order. First term is positive. That's great. And there's two terms. And there's a minus between them. Immediately when you see this, you should check for what? Okay, that sucked. Let's try that again. Uh, it's in order. The first term is positive. There's no GCF besides one, and you have two terms. You should check for what? Grouping? No. That's silly. Diamond problem? No. Difference of squares? That's what you should check for. There's a minus between them. Check for difference of squares. Okay, well, let's do it. Uh, can you set that up as a difference of squares? As long as you can write both terms as something squared. It's, you can use parentheses or not here. It doesn't really matter. I know that if I write y squared squared, it's y to the fourth. If I write 9 squared, it's 81. And that gives me the idea. That fits our paradigm of difference of squares. What we do is we write the first thing first, the last thing last. Make sure you actually write that number here. Um, don't do this. Don't write this as 9 squared and then accidentally take a square root of that and put 3. You don't want to double do something, all right? If you write this as 9 squared, put the 9. Does that make sense? If you don't write the 9 squared, you do in your head, okay, cool. Take a square root, put 9, but don't do two square roots. That would be a, a mistake. Signs are different, and are we done? Yes or no? no. Are we done here? Yes. Are we done here? No. I'm going to do this one pretty quickly, because at this point, you're probably getting really used to doing difference of squares, at least seeing them. Here's a difference. That's squared, yeah? That's squared. What number is that squared? Three. Three. So we're going to do y minus 3, and we're going to have y plus 3. And if you wanted to work that out the same way we did this, you absolutely could. But you can see it right here. y squared, middle terms are the same with different signs are gone. And then minus 9. That's completely factored. Show of hands if you got that one on your own. That's really good. You got all three factors? Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, next up. Next up. What do we do here? Order. Order. Okay, so is it an order? Yeah. Is the first term positive? Yes. yes. We like that. Is there a GCF besides one? Yes. yes. Got to take care of that first. What is it? Five. five. So we're going to factor the five and get 16 y to the fourth. Oh, I gave you nice numbers, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Didn't I? Actually, you might just prefer 15 y to the fourth because then you won't have to do any more work. Uh, but with the 16, you do. So what are we going to do here? Treat it like a new problem, yeah. Consider this to be difference of squares. So let's let's look at this. I'm going to take this out of the side. If I gave you this problem all by itself, you should be able to factor that. And the only way we can factor it after we've done the GCF, and there's two terms, the minus, you've got to write this as a difference of squares right now. So we'll try. Good, yeah. If I'm going to write this as something being squared, well, I know that 4 squared gives me 16. I know that y squared gives me y squared squared gives me the fourth. I know one goes right there. Let's verify that for me. Is this still 16 y to the fourth? Yeah. Yeah, that's one. Will it work? Can I factor it? Yeah. Sure. It fits the it fits the difference of squares. So we're going to have first thing first. So we're going to put our first thing. First and first in our two different factors, just like we're doing a diamond problem. Please don't lose track of that the, the idea that this really is kind of just a shortcut for diamond problems, right? It's, it's just a nice shortcut for us. So we put our first thing first and first. That's why we have two factors here. Our last thing last and last. Different signs between them, and the five goes up front. Why are we not done? Oh, right here is a difference of squares, right? Mm -hmm. No, right here is a difference of squares, right? Yes. Yeah, so we take that one off to the side now. So off to the side here, I'm going to work over here now. we got our 4y squared minus 1. If I gave you the problem by itself, you should be able to factor it, which means that in the problem, you, sh you need to factor it. So here, we'll do it quickly. Here's a difference. I have two terms. No GCF because I already took care of it. I look for a difference of squares, which means I've got to be able to write this as something squared minus something squared. The one, man, that's nice. One squared is always one. 
That's easy. So 1 means 1 squared. 2y squared, let's check. Is 2y quantity squared equal to 4y squared? Mm -hmm. Here's a square, here's a difference, here's a square. What that means is I can rewrite this as shortcut for down problem. The first thing comes first, last thing comes last, signs are different between them. I'm just going to take this and factor it right here. So 2y minus 1, 2y plus 1, that's just taking this and substituting. We keep our 4y squared plus 1, put the 5 out front. We have, let's make sure, we haven't missed our 5. We factor this into two factors. We factor this into two factors. We get all our factors, and we're completely done. Show of hands if that one makes sense, you feel okay with it. Now, can you do it on your own? Mm -hmm. I think so. If you can do this on your own, you've learned everything that I expect you to know at this point about factoring. If you know GCF, you know difference of squares, you know diamond problems. That's it. And that, that's all we've, we've really done. Right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you uh, just one special case on how you should look at your problems. Then we'll talk about how to do this when it's not squares but cubes. And that gets kind of fun, um, but it's very much following a pattern, okay? Just like we follow a pattern for difference of squares. So I'll give you that, like, just a little extension concept that I want you to know. And after that, we are really done with factory. So you, you've learned. There's nothing more I can tell you. If you know how to do this, you're, you're good to go. So here we are. Just some simple, special case type stuff. I want you to see at least once. And you're going to know this because we've already really talked about it. So uh, let's check out negative 25 x squared plus 121. My question is, do you know what to do first? Are they in order? Yes. OK. If they're in order, there's a problem right now. What's the problem? The first time is negative. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big problem, and here's why it's a problem. If there's two terms like this, and you try to do a difference of squares, firstly, it's not a difference. Secondly, there's no way to write this as a square. Because when you square in a number, you get a positive, not a negative. And that's a problem. So in order to cope with that, this is one of the reasons why I say, hey, just make your first term positive. If you can do that, it's easy. Put it in order, and then make your first term positive. So what happens in this case is, your GCF becomes negative 1. So if you factor out negative 1, and you can put the 1 or not, we really, really shouldn't. If you just factor the negative out, it's fine. Then this becomes 25x squared minus 121. You guys okay with that one so far? You don't need the 1, all you need is the minus. But notice, that would give you negative back, that would give you positive back. I'm going to leave it to you to do the intermediate work here. Um, but if you were to continue, you get 5x and 5x, 11 and 11, minus plus, and the minus would be out front. I think we spoke about this earlier too. Does this negative get distributed to all four of these or just two? In fact, the way that you would probably do this, distribute this first and then distribute your negative. Uh, the negative does not go to all of these. It does not. It goes to one or the other or you do this first and then distribute it. Do not ever distribute this to all four spots. Essentially what you'd be doing there is multiplying by negative one and then another negative one, and that's a problem. Do you guys see the difference there? It's making your signs wrong, and you don't want to be wrong. You guys okay with these ones? Mm -hmm. Now, over here we continued factoring. Should I continue factoring here? Mm -hmm. No, there's nothing to do. It's not a difference of squares, it's just a difference. Uh, so what I want from you, I want to do two problems. Just so you see it a couple times.
Hmm. Shall I leave more time? Let's take about another 20 seconds or so, and then we'll start working on that. Those two problems over there. Did you go through? Are you starting to go through the process like I'm trying to brainwash you into doing? Does it in your head? Does it go order? First term negative, you know, positive, uh, GCF. Are you doing that? Have I brainwashed you enough yet? No. I will. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> you should. You should be doing that. You should be going, okay. Uh, are they in order? Are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is the first term positive? No. That's a problem. Right there, fix it, and then you're good to go. So if you fix it, fixing it means factor the negative. Do it correctly. Make sure your signs work here, which they negative. Positive, I know I'm good. And then continue with your factoring. But you don't want to start factoring until you can make sure you're in order and your first term is positive. Because all this stuff falls apart if it's fine. So here, um, can you factor that? Yes. Yeah, this is 3y squared. I'm not even going to write it. I'm just going to do it for you. This is 3y squared. This is 10 squared. So if it's 3y squared and 10 squared, we put 3y and 3y. You can, of course, do the work up the side, just like I've been showing you. Right now, uh, this is kind of just your practice. So I expect that you're doing that, but I'm not going to do it every, every once in a while. We put 10 here and here. We have a plus. We get a minus. And we're not going to forget that. Just a negative right up front. Can you still double check your work? Yes. Should you be double checking your work? Yes. Yeah, of course you should. Uh, show of hands if you got that on your own. Okay, next one. Order? Yes. First term positive? No. Fix it. So if the first term is not positive, we factor a negative. <coughs> right? No. Why right? Why, why wrong? Plus. Plus. Because if I factor the negative, negative divided by negative is positive. Now, I keep going, yes? No. no. Why not? It's positive. As soon as you see square plus and two terms, not three, that's, that's not a problem, that's different, okay? Not four, that's grouping. But two terms with a square and a plus, you're done. You cannot factor that. If there's no GCF besides one, which would have already been taken care of, by the time you look at it, you're done. You can't factor it. So, prime? No, not really, because we factored out the negative. Okay, but that's okay. Uh, technically prime in here? Yes. Yeah, this is like a prime uh, binomial. You can't go any further than that. So, depends if you recognize that one. You're okay with it. All right, now. Something a little unique. The first one, man, we know. We know different squares. We've been doing it for a day and a half now. We know that if we have two terms that we can represent as a square and a square with a minus between them, not a plus, but a minus, we can factor it by a shortcut, a nice shortcut called difference of squares. We have first thing first, last thing last, different sides. Works every time. It's great. But there are a couple of other situations that we can use shortcuts for. Now, I'll tell you. With difference of cubes and sum of cubes, we generally have a really hard time factoring cubic equations. Cubic equations would look like this. How many terms do you see? Four. four. Okay, so listen carefully to what I'm saying here. If you have four terms, four terms, what would you normally use? Grouping. grouping. And if grouping doesn't work for you, grouping four terms is kind of a special case. If the grouping doesn't work for you, we can't factor it in this class. I will tell you there is a general factoring method for x to the third. There's also one for x to the fourth. There's not one for x to the fifth and higher. In fact, it takes about six weeks and a lot of paper to prove it, but I've done it, uh, that you can't, you cannot generally factor uh, degree 5 polynomials and higher without knowing a root. You can't do it, okay? It, it, you can do this without grouping, but it's really hard, and it's beyond the scope of our class, okay? So for us, if there's four terms and you can't group it, you're done. If there's no GCF, you're done, and four terms and you can't group it, you're done. Does that make sense? So that's usually what happens with the cubics. We have very special cases where we can group it sometimes, and that, those are the ones that you've been practicing, haven't you? You've seen them. There is another special case where we can factor cubics. And it happens if we have a difference of two cubes or a sum of two cubes. Uh, by the way, where's the sum of squares? There is none. Right there. Can you do that? 
That's why we don't have it. There is no sum of squares, but there is a sum of cubes. So uh, hopefully you can you can recognize this. A difference of squares is a square minus a square. What's a difference of cubes going to be? A cube. Yep, that's it. That's a difference of cubes. Uh, what's a sum of cubes going to be? Huh? Shocking. Sum means plus. If you can get, if you can get your two-term polynomial to fit this or this or this, you can factor it. If you can't get your two-term polynomial to fit this or this or this, you can't factor it. It's that simple. So if you have two terms, where are you looking? Well, if it's square, you're looking here. If it's cubed, you're looking here. That's the only things you can do. So we're not going to kind of fiddle around with, man, what else? If, if you factor the GCF, which you should do automatically every time, and you have two terms, it's got to be one of these guys or you're done. Like this. Is this this? Could it possibly be this one? I don't know. Does it have a power of three? No. Then no. So it has to fit perfect. Does that make sense to you? It's got to fit. So, and this would not apply. Uh, oh, I erased it. The y to the cube one I gave you a little while ago wouldn't apply because you do your GCF first. GCF always comes first. Quick head nod if you're, you're getting the constant. The rules I gave you at the very beginning, they never change, okay? It's always order, GCF. Well, order, negative GCF thing at the same time, okay? Order, negative GCF, and then count terms. Four terms, group it. Three terms, diamond problem, then group it. Two terms, here. This is what you do for two, two terms. First one, man, we've hammered that to death. We're kicking a dead horse, all right? It's not going to help you run. Um, the next one, the difference of cubes. Now, at this point, you need to memorize that because it's really straightforward. These ones, I would expect that you have a little cheat sheet for right now when you're doing your homework until you get it memorized. Uh, so that, that's fine. You don't need to memorize this formula right off the bat. Uh, after doing it enough times, you'll have it down. I'll give you a little hint on how to do it. But here it goes. Here's how this is fat. I don't have a, uh, I guess I have enough room. I can do it here. Here's how this is factored. <clears throat> um, by the way, I do this for a certain reason. The way I, the reason why I have these in order, I've written them the same way every single time, even though you don't have to, is because there's a pattern to it. Uh, if you notice something, do you notice how these signs are the same and these signs are different? The same pattern works here. That's why I keep with it, okay? Negative or minus, minus, minus. Minus, what's going to go here? Minus. Yes. And it's going to be A minus B, as a matter of fact. Which makes it kind of nice and easier to remember that way. Now, the next part of it, think about this for a second, okay? If I take A squared and I divide out 1A, I only have 1A left. But if I take A to the third and I divide out 1A, I'm still going to have A squared. Do you get that? So this is going to start with A squared. Now, going to have some b's, and at the very end of this, if I take away a b by factorization, if I factor out one b, I'm still going to have a b squared. Recognize something. You better recognize, all right? Uh, <laughs> a joke. Recognize something. There's no way to square a number and get a negative. True? Yeah. True? Yeah. Then that's a plus. That's always a plus. I don't care what you're doing, that's always a plus. Can you, that? Can you square a number and get a negative? Mm -hmm. Can you? then that has to be a plus, because there's no way to get a negative when you square a number. It has to be a plus. The middle term is a little funny. It's going to have an A and a B. And here's where you follow the pattern. Check it out. Same sign for the first factor, different sign for the second factor. Same sign for the first factor. What's that? Same sign for the first factor. Different sign for the second factor. What is that one? This is always plus, always, no matter what you're doing, because you can't ever get a negative when you square something, you're squaring something. But the way that I remember this is just kind of thinking through it. Um, I'm hoping I explained it well enough for you, you guys to get that too. If you're factoring out A minus B, you're only taking away one A, you have an A squared. You're only taking away one B, you got a B squared. Okay? Same sign, different signs, that's always a plus, you need A, B in the middle. 
Uh, that formula works as long as you can fit it to this paradigm, that pattern. Now, the other one, hoping you can understand, it's going to look exactly the same, except for the signs. You're still going to have an A, you're still going to have a B. You'll have an A squared, you'll have an AB, and you'll have a B squared. <clears throat> the only sign that I want to talk about real quick is this one. Check it out. That's a B squared, yes? Yeah. Can you ever get a negative with a B squared? No. Yeah. What's that going to be? Plus. Okay. Now follow the pattern. What's this one? Plus. Mm -hmm. It goes same sign, then different sign. It goes same sign, then different sign. Let's try this again. What's this going to be? Same sign. Same sign. Negative. What's this going to be? Negative. That's how it goes. Now, for right now, write this down on your homework, whenever you're doing your homework, and practice with it. You will eventually memorize it. Um, and try maybe to do a flashcard, whatever you want to do. I don't care how you do it. Um, eventually, memorize these. For right now, I, I understand that it's hard to memorize this right off the bat. Okay? This one, yeah, you should probably have it down. We've done it so much. These two, write it down for now. What I'd like to do, I'd like to practice just a few of these. Not a whole lot, maybe like four. Just to give you a, a couple examples of, of each one, okay? I'm not going to give you examples of that because we have to beat it to death. Um, but we will try some. some Are you ready? Have you ever done those before? Yes. Yeah. Some maybe. Most probably not. Uh, or maybe limited. Because usually uh, teachers kind of go through this pretty quick because you don't, you don't see these a lot in what we're doing. And the reason why you don't see these a lot in what we're doing is because we normally stick to quadratics. And that's as far as our class goes. So we usually don't see a whole lot of that stuff until you get to later classes. But by that time, you should know how to factor it. So you, you don't really get it a whole lot. So I'm going to make sure you know it. Um, x cubed plus 27. Okay, the first thing we always check, what is it? Do we have it in order? Yes. Is our first term positive? Yes. Is there a GCF besides one? Mm -hmm. no. How many terms do you have? Two. Okay, so check this out. That's a plus. Should I just go, oh, two terms and a plus, I'm done. No. Should I, no. <clears throat> Why not? Well, let's look at it. If this was a square, could I do that? No. Well, I'm sorry, if this was a square, I'd say two terms, square and a plus. I'm done. There's no way I can factor that. Does that make sense? No way. But as soon as I put a cube up there, things change a bit. Things change. So here's the deal. You look over here, you gotta, you got to trust me that the only way to factor two terms, besides the GCF, is this. Does that fit this? No. Does that fit this? No. Does that fit this? No. Fit this? Yes. yes. Yeah. As long as you make it fit, then you're good. If you can't, then you can't factor it. It's as simple as that. It's got to fit one of these three. If it's got a square, that's the only one. If it's got a cube, you get two options. The option is it's a plus or minus, but you got to make it so that it's not a square anymore. It's, can I write that as something being cubed? Can I fit it there? Three. What is it? Three. 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 Yeah. So we go, well, it's not that one, that's a minus. It's not that one, that's a minus. This one, oh, yeah, yeah. Instead of A, I have X. Instead of B, I have 3. Well, we're going to do the same pattern like we did for uh, different squares, only now we have a little bit more to do. As long as you can follow this pattern, and you guys should be good at it because we've been doing this so often, all we have to do is create one small factor, one big factor, and then put the correct information in the correct place. You with me? So let's try it. A came first. What goes first here? X. Perfect. What's going to go here? X squared. Okay, very good. B came last. B goes last. A was first. A goes first. So first things first. Last things last. First thing first. Last things, what goes here? Three. What goes here? Three squared. Very good, three squared. Last things last. You have to have the square. You've got to have that. And if you, if you did the, fo it's not really foil, it's like foil oil, because you've got inside stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you multiply three times three, you get nine. Three times nine gives you 27. That's where we're getting that from. Now, the middle one, not that hard as long as you just put these terms together. So we have, yeah, and you know what? It really says do A, B. 
but multiplication is commutative. So if you wanted to put x times 3, that's fine. But really, we're going to switch that around to 3x in the end. So if you want to do 3x, that's cool too. I'm going to put x times 3 because it's by the book right now, and I want to make sure you see where it's coming from. Let's verify that all these things are in the right spot. We've got the first thing going first with an x squared. Actually, the formula. We get the last thing going last with the three squares, like the formula. And then we have these two terms, both of them, right in the middle with multiplication, just like it says right there. Show of hands if you're okay with that so far. Now, the signs are important because if you haven't noticed yet, these are exactly the same, except for the signs. What's this sign? Plus. Plus. Do you ever put a minus there? No. You can't, because 3 squared or negative 3 squared, whatever it is, it's going to be plus. You can't ever get a negative. Uh, what goes here? Plus. The same sign as this. What goes here? Negative. The different sign of this. That's it. Now clean it up just a little bit. Clean it up means that you're going to rewrite this polynomial so that you don't have things like x3. And you don't have things like 3 squared, you have 9. That's the idea. Now, I'll tell you something. Um, these ones are not generally factorable. There might be a special case every once in a while where you can't factor it. For the most part, you can't touch that. Do, 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 do. Can't touch this. Did I use that joke already? Yeah. Dang it. Oh. <laughs> That's the same time in this class. Usually I try to at least mix up a little bit. Shoot. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you're, you're done here. This is a diamond problem, but with A is 1, shortcut, but there's no numbers that multiply to 9 and add to negative 3. You can't do it. So we're done. That's completely factored. Did you guys get that one? Yes. Okay. You want to try one on your own? Yes. Or you want to wait till it's a little harder to try one on your own? Let's do that. Let's do a couple. Oh, cool. Bless, Bless you. you. Thank you. It's like a sneeze grenade. All right. Let's try, uh, let's do maybe two, three more, two more together, and I'll give you some ones to, to challenge you a little bit, okay? We'll treat it like a test, see if you can do it. Okay, number one, number one. We check for what? Order. It's an order. We check if the first term is positive. It is. We check for a GCF besides one. Do we have one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we count the number of terms. How many terms? Two, two, two. Now, when you count the number of terms, you also look for whether it's based on squares or based on cubes. Which one is this? Cubes. Okay. So should I be looking at difference of squares right now? No. It does not fit. Should I be looking at a sum of cubes right now? No. No. It's not a sum. It's a difference. Can I fit it here? Well, you can check all three. Does it fit there? No. Heck no, you can not square. Does it fit here? No, it's not a sum. Does it fit here? Yes. Let's make it fit. So we have x to the third, that's a pretty easy one. Can you write 64 as something to the third power? Four. Four, yeah, four to the third power. And now we see, yeah, you know what, it fits. Check out the similarity here. You're going to see something. I've wrote them right on top of each other for a reason. Uh, you're going to see something here. You will follow exactly the same pattern. Exactly the same pattern. You'll have your first thing first, just like here. That'll be squared. You'll have your last thing last, just like here. This will be squared. You'll have the x, first term, and the last term together. Do you guys see how similar those are? It's really the same thing. Here's x, x, 3, OK, 4. It's a different number. x squared, x squared. 3 squared, 4 squared x times 3, x times 4. The only difference is in the signs. The signs are what's important here. This, what's that going to be? Plus. Plus. Always a plus. Can, four, can a number squared ever be a negative? No, no, no. Only be a plus. How about that sign? <coughs> negative. Same, Same sign? Different sign. Different signs. That's the idea. There's only one more little thing we got to do. What do we got to do? <coughs> yeah, make it look nicer because this looks, that's, that's nasty, okay? So we want x minus 4. Can I factor x minus 4? No. Okay. x squared minus, sorry, plus 4x plus 16. Can I factor x squared plus 4x plus 16? Can you think of two numbers that add to 4 and multiply to 16? No. No. No, neither. We're done. That's completely factored. We're completely done. Can I, is this making sense to you? Do you follow the, the formula? 
Let's try, um, let's try one more, a little more challenging. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you uh, three to do on your own. Maybe, maybe two. We'll see. And see that you can do it. True or false? This is a good example of difference of squares. True or false? False. Difference of squares. True or false? False. Why? That's a square. That number's a square, but that's not. Can this be difference of squares? No. Is this a good example of sum of cubes? Sum of cubes. Why not? Yeah, it's not a sum. Pretty obvious it's not a sum. No plus. Can I write this as a difference of cubes? Yes. Yes. One is one of those universal numbers. It's a square, it's a cube, it's anything. This could write as one cube. That's easy. Can I write this first term as something to the third power? We're going to talk about 64. 64 is an interesting number. It's a square and it's a cube. That's kind of cool. Is that still the same as 64 y to the third? Yes. Can I make it fit that pattern? Okay, so here's what we do. This falls into not a difference of squares, not a sum of cubes, difference of cubes. We have small factor, big factor. We put first thing, if you just follow the pattern, it's always first thing first, last thing last. Always. First thing first, first thing first. Now there's one thing that's interesting here. Can I have your attention here real quick? Check it out. When you do this, you had the first thing that's 4y, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now when I put the 4y here, can you tell me what happens to the 4y here? It's squared, just like the x was squared here, the x was squared here. The 4y has to be squared. Are you going to be correct if you just do that? Mm -hmm. When I say the 4y has to be squared, what I mean is the 4y has to be squared. You have to have that. You guys okay with that one? The whole thing gets squared. The whole thing. Not just the y, the whole thing. Now, let's do the, the last thing. What's the last thing that I'm going to write? One. one squared. One here, and then, yep, one squared here. In the middle, we get the 4y times the 1. Okay, let's make sure we're all good on this before we, we head on to a different problem. Uh, we're on difference of cubes. It's this one. A goes first, A squared goes second. So, first thing goes first, first thing squared, the whole thing. Don't just write 4y squared, it's different. It's 4y in parentheses squared. That's important. So, first thing first, and first thing first squared. Last thing last, last thing last squared. Two terms, right in the middle, multiply together. What goes in there? Plus. Yeah, always. What goes here? The same sign. What goes here? Opposite side, different sign. And that's it. Just clean it up. So we have our 4y minus 1. Nothing happens there. Here, you need to square it. So what's 4y squared? 16y. 16y. 16y squared. Plus, oh, this is kind of easy. 4y times 1 is 4y. Plus how much? 1. Now, again, can you factor 16y squared plus 4y plus 1? I don't know. Can you give me two numbers to add to 4 and multiply to 16? No. So we're done. Good to go. Show of hands if you're okay with that one. Are you ready to try a couple on your own? So you're like, no. I want you to try anyway. Work on it. See if you can fit it. It will work. Okay, I think we'll have time for that one. I want you to all do that problem. 
I will put one more up on the board. Uh, this would be like a, a challenging problem for a test, okay? So these two I would definitely expect you to be able to do. This one I don't know if we're going to have time for, but I'm going to run through it very quickly at the very end, just so you get one more taste of, of that factory. Okay, we got about a minute left. Um, what I want to make sure that you've done is at least set this up correctly. So have used the formula correct. So anyway, when we check this, it's a sum and it's got two terms. The only possible thing it could be is this one. If it doesn't fit this, we can't do it. This, as a matter of fact, does fit as 3x to the third plus 2 to the third. Did you recognize that? Yeah. 27x to the third plus 8. Hey, we got it. Small factor. Big factor. First thing goes first. First thing squared goes first. What I want to make sure you did is you put the 3x in parentheses. Did you do that? No. Yeah. If you didn't, do you recognize that? Look, at, if you don't do that, if you just get 3x squared, do you guys see that when you distribute, you get 9x to the third? That is not 27. You need to have the 3 times 9 here. That's the square part. Last thing is 2, last thing goes here, last thing squared goes here. Did you square the last one? In the middle we have the 3x times the 2. This is always a plus. This is the same sign, this is different signs, and then we clean it up. 3x plus 2, we get 9x squared minus 6x plus 4. That's the correct factorization. I want to know if you guys got that. The important ones are the 9x squared. And the four. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're actually squaring them. Uh, last one, if you want to, don't pack up. Yeah, we're almost done. Um, this, you're going to find some repetition of numbers with cubes a lot uh, because there's very few of them. There's one, there's eight, there's, uh, let's see, 27, there's 64, and there's 125. If it's not one of those five numbers under 125, you, you can't do it. So you're going to see a lot of 64s, 125s, 8s, 1s, and uh, whatever the number I said. Yeah, you yeah, anyway. So this is 5x to the third minus 4y to the third, and then we'd start doing this. We have small factor, we have large factor. This is first thing and first thing squared. You see where this, why, we, why it's important to have a square? You see that? It's important to have that. We have last thing, and we have last thing squared. You've got to have it in parentheses squared. Do you understand why? You've got to get that square in there so that we get these numbers back. In the middle, we'd have 5x and we have 4y. This is always a plus. This is the same sign. This is different signs. And if we clean it up, 5x minus 4y, that's done. Here we get 25x squared plus 20xy. You see where the 20xy is coming from? Plus 16y squared, and that's completely factored. Show hands feel okay with what we've done. Very good. We have just finished all the factoring. Next section, we're going to use it.